As dedicated Formula E fans, we can't ignore the fact that hand injuries have been happening more often to drivers in Formula E than in Formula 1, and this has got many of us wondering why. In today's video, we'll closely examine some of these injured drivers and try to understand why these incidents occur so frequently in Formula E compared to other racing events. So, let's start off with the initial injury that occurred at the beginning of Season 9. During the first lap of the 2023 Formula E World Championship season opener, Robin Freins had a significant accident that resulted in him spending nearly a week in a Mexican hospital. It was during the inaugural round of the new Gen 3 era, when Freins found himself involved in a collision with Norman Nato's Nissan car as the pack maneuvered through a corner. After Freins' car collided with the rear right tyre of Nato's vehicle, his steering wheel was ripped from his hand slamming his left arm into the side of his compartment. Although the initial onboard footage might have portrayed the accident as relatively harmless, Freins' hand had in fact suffered multiple fractures and he had to undergo over five hours of surgery. It took him eight weeks to fully heal from the operation. Freins spoke on the accident, saying, The bone was sticking out of my hand. No fun. This is definitely the worst injury in my career and hopefully it will stop right here. Now, let's talk about another noteworthy driver, Envision Sebastian Buemi, who encountered his own hand injuries during an incident with Maximilian Gunter on lap 3 of the Sao Paulo Championship. Buemi made contact with the back of Gunter's Maserati DS at Turn 4. Although Buemi was screaming in both pain and anger on his team radio, he would go on to finish the race and place 10th. In another incident, driver Oliver Rowland sustained minor hand injuries during the Formula E Monaco E Prix. Rowland, representing Mahindra at the time, collided with the rear of Eduardo Mortara's car during the race and was forced to retire. However, after undergoing an X-ray examination at the hospital, Rowland's team eventually confirmed that he was given the all-clear. But this is just one more in a series of hand injuries caused by low-speed frontal collisions. In Season 8, Sam Bird's participation in the Seoul Formula E finale was in question due to a broken hand he sustained during the second London E Prix. Bird encountered an incident at the start of the race in which he was rear-ended by Dan Tictum. He managed to complete the race, ultimately finishing in 8th place. However, shortly after his hand injury was determined to be a displaced mid-shaft fracture, forcing him to miss upcoming races. Being put on the sidelines due to an injury must be quite disappointing, as Bird was quoted saying, I'm devastated not to be driving in the final two rounds of the season in Seoul, particularly as it would have been my 100th race in Formula E. Had Sam Bird participated in the 2022 season finale in Seoul, he would witness yet another driver suffer a hand injury, as Antonio Giovinazzi was forced to retire early with a busted thumb. So there seems to be a pattern here, doesn't there? Hand injuries take the lead as the most frequent type of injury in Formula E, but that's not the case in Formula 1 racing, where a considerable percentage of drivers, approximately 60%, have reported experiencing bruises after races. It's worth noting that lower limb bruising tends to be more prevalent than upper limb bruising, and approximately half of the drivers also suffer from neck sprains. So why does Formula E have so many more hand injuries? Well, there are many theories attempting to answer this question at the moment. One possible reason is the absence of power steering in Formula E cars, unlike in other racing categories. This means that drivers have to exert much more physical effort to control the steering. Now, combine the lack of power steering with a relatively high caster angle, and this results in higher torque levels experienced by drivers, averaging around 20nm and peaking up to 35nm during aggressive curbing. In comparison, Formula 1 drivers have torque levels of 12 to 15 Nm due to power steering assistance. Additionally, the steering ratio in Formula E cars amplifies the rotation of the steering wheel. Formula E cars typically have a steering rotation of 740 degrees lock to lock, while Formula 1 cars go through about 540 degrees lock to lock. So, not only is the torque transmitted to drivers higher, but the steering wheel also rotates further and faster in the event of an accident. Others believe the reason for this phenomenon is due to the nature of Formula E street circuit tracks, where drivers are in much closer proximity to one another, resulting in more front-end collisions. 
Whether it has to do with a stiff steering setup or the narrow track layouts is up for debate, but one thing is certain, there is no fix to the problem coming anytime soon. Formula E co-founder Alberto Longo has said that they will look into the cause of this problem, but no mechanical adjustments will be made before the start of season 11. So, all we can do at this point is hope that our drivers stay healthy and avoid collisions. What are your thoughts on this? Share them below and subscribe for more Formula E content.